Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable show. This is episode 554. We've got some great stories this week. We've got a great panel. They're just about waking up. They've been dealing with little emergencies. My guest hadn't installed his Zoom until one minute before he was going to come on the show. It's all well prepared and organised as normal. But there we go. We're going to let our guest, a returning guest, a friend of the show, a connoisseur of content marketing and other achievements we got brian jackson joining us so brian would you like to quickly introduce yourself brian yeah thanks for having me back um yeah so right now i'm i'm just working at a little agency i have with my brother forge media and we are currently just developing a couple wordpress performance focused plugins it's building a little empire, actually, <laughs> listeners and viewers. Uh, um, there we go, from his headquarters in Arizona. Uh, um, Heather, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, the unicorn of the show? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, Heather, uh, Heather Renzi, the uh, unicorn whisperer and uh, the digital solutions lead at The Difference. Uh, we do uh, a lot of uh, consulting uh, for the U.S. Air Force, Space Force, and uh, large uh, corporate and and uh, government uh, around the world. Yeah, it, it almost made it the rocket yesterday, didn't it? But it was the la- it's the landings that you've got to always worry about, isn't it, Eva? Uh, um, Spencer, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Sure, Spencer Foreman from launchflows.com. Oh, that's great. And I've got my friend John Locke. John, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, John from lockdownseo.com. Oh, that's great. Um, before going into the main stories of the week, um, I want to talk about one of our great sponsors, and that's Kinsta. Kinsta is a WordPress-only provider. It's a premier WordPress provider. If you've got a WooCommerce website for yourself or for clients, you've got a learning management system, a membership site, anything that's large that needs resources, go and have a look at Kinsta, and I'm sure you and your clients aren't going to be unhappy about you doing that. Um, They provide excellent value, excellent service, really powerful service using the Google Cloud, great interface, great support. Everything's great, basically. Um, Go over to Kinsta, have a look at their packages. I suggest that you should buy one. Um, If you do do that for yourself or your clients, please tell them, please, that you heard about them on the WP Tonic site. It helps them and also helps the show. So let's go straight into the stories. Um, Automatic requires Mel Poet. What did you think of this one, Spencer? Well, they're kind of like putting together their Monopoly board. They're buying, uh, you know... uh, they're buying a piece here and a piece there. And now they're putting up houses on Ventnor Avenue or something. Um, MailPoet is an interesting CRM. Uh, we supported at WP Fusion. I don't think it's really the technology that they're buying. I think they're probably buying more of the team in this case to help them with really moving the same stuff that, you know, I spend my days working on marketing automation into the sales funnel space of WooCommerce. You know, right now you can use WooCommerce to send out transactional emails. There's some nice add-ons like the follow-ups email add-on and so forth, but they don't have an integrated system. And I I already see the handwriting on the wall that, you know, at WooCommerce.com, somebody can go there and get their Shopify slash WooCommerce shop up and running. Well, to do that well, you need automation. You'll need uh, a CRM capability. You need email capability. So I think this is how they're going about it. The only beef I have, and it's a love-hate relationship, is like this this is like one of those like made for tv movies where the 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 best friend in high school has a a romance for the the protagonist and they they keep trying to make it clear like i'm the one you should be with me you should be with me well here's all the people in wordpress who are saying automatic pick us pick us would you please focus on us and instead automatic just keeps turning their back and trying to build a standalone system for people to pay money on and that's what I see happening here. It's like, why are you guys focusing on acquiring companies to do standalone services? It's certainly not to help the open source community part of things. It's just to help the WordPress.com. Well, or- I, I think I've got a clear understanding why they're doing that because um, I don't know if they're going to be able to do this, but I'm, I now I think I've got a clear understanding why Salesforce invested 300 million in them because 
you look at any uh, any like Shopify, where really, if you look really at at the accounts of Shopify, where they're really making the money is that they provide a payment gateway. And if you really, you know, I, I think I'm correct in saying that Stripe is the most um, profitable non-public company in the Silicon Valley. Um, if you want to make gobs of money, be a popular gateway provider. And um, it's a natural for uh, WooCommerce, ha if they can achieve it, I have my doubts because of the management more than anything. What do you reckon, Heather? So, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of people love MailPoet and like I've, I've almost considered using it a couple of times because I mean, it's, it's a cost effective way to uh, do what it does um like because because like if, if you've got uh because mailchimp quickly gets out of hand and i think they're using amazon ses as their backbone for mail poet so like a lot of people if they try to use that on their own like it's it's really hard to configure and they don't uh unless unless they're a developer it's 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 a difficult thing so i mean like they've they've got a they've they've got a, a good niche and um yeah i mean it's 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 a good at the very least, it's a good aqua hire, um, but at the very best, like there, it's a it's a good tool that they've developed for people. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, my I, I ex think my experience my experience of it is the um, the newsletter side was quite yeah. good, but um, they yeah. had a they had a lot of work to do on the CRM, the optimization side. Um, it was buggy and it really didn't do too much but what do you reckon brian what do you reckon about this uh i have mixed feelings because i i got to meet kim at last year's word camp like he's a great guy i had a chat with him and i think he really understands the wordpress community so i think um what was said earlier about they're acquiring the team is definitely part of it like i think kim will definitely ha help automatic um but I'm also not a fan of putting anything in my WordPress install that <laughs> shouldn't be in there. Um, so for me, like I've always done email marketing outside of WordPress. That's where I think it should be done. So MailPoet is just not something personally I would ever use. Um, but I know why people use it. It's the same reason why people use Elementor and other things that, um, you know, that I might not be a fan of, but they're building it for the user. So I see why people are using it. Uh, the need for it. Um, I guess it'll be interesting to see how it goes under automatic. Um, yeah, so a mixed feelings because I wouldn't use it, but yeah, it's. Oh, well, yeah. What do you reckon, John? Yeah, I um, I definitely see where the roadmap is going here. I, I, it definitely looks like they want to have some sort of uh, email service to where you can do email marketing from your WooCommerce store and integrate it all through Jetpack. <laughs> so that's what this is all about because Shopify, of all their competitors, when you're talking about CMSs, Shopify is the one that's growing the most. We talked mm -hmm. about that, I think, like a week or two ago. So they need to take steps to elevate WooCommerce and make it a one-stop solution um, to where you can sign up and and have all these pieces in place so that's what this is about but yeah they get 11 new engineers so that's pretty awesome too yeah what do you reckon about the gateway provision because uh, when i looked at shopify you know that's that's where they really start to make some real money is when you provide you know you're creaming off about 2.9 percent of every trans transaction you can't do much better than that can you john Shopify is offering a gateway. Yeah, they got their own gateway. Oh. If you look yeah. at uh, if you look at the uh, recent news about Elementor doing self hosting, you're going to see that see gateways like Stripe are really hard to pull off. Stripe's not going to have much competition except for the dinosaurs. What they do is they build these relationships with the banks who clear the money, and they split the two point nine percent plus thirty cents per transaction. So you're one hundred percent right, John. There's no argument that like it's cash machine to be Stripe, but being Stripe is, is a really high barrier to entry. There's nobody who's going to come along, you know, 
the ones that exist now are square or one of the dinosaurs, you know, yeah. like from whatever. But when it comes to using the services, you're also right without saying it that if you could get people to subscribe, like, and I'm going to pick on them because I had an in, two incidences of them this week. WP Engine, when it was created, solved a problem for managed hosting because it was really hard to set up hosting and set up it on these old shared servers. And so what they did is they varnished the crap out of a bunch of, you know, rack servers and told you you can only do 10,000 page view a month and they shoved all the kids in the school bus. But now flash forward that varnish and caching gets in the way of things, but they're still charging some people $200 a month to break their sites when they could just go to Cloudways, Kinsta, something else that's really actually controllable and solve it. Same thing here. If you can get people to park their business into your elementor.com hosting or your wordpress.com hosting or your woocommerce.com system, they're betting on that recurring revenue will stay in perpetuity at a high level, even if the people are not getting anything really more than just a commodity. And, and that's the whole game. It's really that simple. But not, to be, not to be a gateway, to be the, sorry to interrupt you again, but remember WooCommerce has this service in Jetpack that I don't know what they're calling. It's called people that are too lazy to, to figure out they're paying too much service, where you use the Jetpack plugin and for your little yoga studio, you can pay them 11% per transaction. Remember we talked about that? It still exists. That's what they're banking on is that you'll do that for your marketing, your email, your payment and so forth. Hey, I use uh, this app called Truebill that just goes through my accounts and finds out if I'm paying for services on like iTunes and stuff that like one that I didn't realize I was still paying for and two, if I'm paying too much like for my uh, internet and stuff. And then they like, I pay them I think 18% to go in and talk to my phone company to be like, hey, this bill's too high. And they get 18% of the difference to negotiate it. And I don't have to sit on the phone with the phone company uh, <laughs> to do that. So that, there's a lucrative thing in there. Oh, you have to put, you have to, that have to be your re recommendation of the week. You have to put that in. I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. sign them up tomorrow, mate. Especially if they can talk to charter those clowns. Big head. Uh, like, Every three months, they just call up CenturyLink for La like, the land of free enterprise. My rear ass, uh, um, freaking Ada, that bloody charter. What pirates they are! There we go. They're, they're um, the you know, all right. Uh, on to the next story before I have a hernia. Um, Oliver tracks additional two two point no two hundred and twenty five point five million investment for fast track AI. Workful, workfuls for healthcare. What did you reckon of this one, Heather? This, this sounds down your alley. <laughs> so, I mean, it just depends on what they mean by an AI workforce. I mean, God, God no, screw no. Yeah, who I think, mean, who thinks of these titles? It, 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 wasn't wasn't, even, it definitely wasn't Brian, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I mean, I read, I read through this article and like, it just says they're, they're driven AI investment and like, it has no idea what like, what this means. Um, I, I mean, they're, if they were using, um, like it, it, it says there's two new AI hires or in two, two new hires that they're using. So um, I absolutely would love if they are, um, I think AI belongs in healthcare. Like I think that you should, uh, that doctors can absolutely use um, an AI first pass at uh, diagnosing people um, because like there are so many examples of tools like uh, for cancer diagnosis, like you can scan somebody's melanoma and it can go through and tell you right away if it's cancerous or not. And then the doctor can see, can interpret that result and tell people. So like, if that's the kind of investment that they're making, um, absolutely, that's great. And I mean, it's going to help the doctors because like in their lifetime, a doctor's only going to see like 10,000 different kinds of melanoma, but like one app uh, has millions from around the world. So the, it, I mean, AI belongs in healthcare and, and that's, that's what I'm getting about this. But not, but not this article. No, this article is terrible. It's written awful and it doesn't tell you anything at all. What do you reckon, John? What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I don't have a really elaborate opinion on this, but, you know, we'll see where it goes. I, at the end of the day, I mean, um, I, I did see something on Twitter the other day. It was um, 
it was like a robot like uh doing surgery on a banana like you know uh stitching up the the, the mm. peel to show like, sounds like a, it sounds like a normal surgery. american it sounds like a normal american hospital it sounds like a bad saturday night it does doesn't it you know you don't want to end up with a set banana too yeah. no, definitely so. okay oh was so, oh, as you were saying robots um spencer's most favorite company boston robotics got bought out didn't they uh, Ram, who bought them? The scary dogs are working for Honda now. Hyundai. Oh, Hyundai or Honda? Hyundai. Was, Hyundai. Hyundai. Whatever. Hyundai. 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 You're going to see cars with like dogs. I wonder what they got. Just... <laughs> but better them than the US military, that's for sure. God, what a thought that would be. God, I mind. Dogs under Trump. There we go. Uh, um, sorry, I couldn't resist it. Uh, Brian, what did you think of this well-written, great title and re- well-written piece? I mean, I mean? agree. I read. You would be proud. Good. You would be proud to <laughs> do something like that, wouldn't you? I mean, it's more like a press release, really, than an article. So yeah, I agree. It's not. I don't know what their motivation is behind it. I looked a, bit, a little bit at the company's website, but if it is truly about trying to push healthcare forward. I think it's a good thing just because, especially with the hospitals right now, obviously we can't keep up with some problems. So if AI can help speed that up, I think it's only a good thing. Um, I'll put it in because Sally, Sally found it and she's normally, she normally finds some good stuff. So I didn't look at it, but I thought, you know, it was interesting. But yeah, I had all the right buzzwords in it, fast track, AI, Workforce, healthcare. You couldn't put more buzzwords in a title, could you, Brian? No, yeah, it's it's very press releasey. Right, there we go. Yeah. All right, what are we doing for time? All right, we've got another one. We breathe a little bit, find some more stories the way we're breezing through these. Uh, um, right, on to the next one. WordPress 5.6 S- Semon, Semon, is it? Um, includes new 2021 theme and improved editor. So what did you think of this one, Brian? Um, the one thing I don't think they mentioned in here, but I'm just glad they got the updated version of jQuery, finally, a, a newer version. Um, they jump like so many versions that people don't realize. But lots of sites were getting flagged for security warnings, and it was true that it's just such an old version of jQuery. And old, now we're finally up with some other technologies, which is nice. Um, I also thought the first woman lead on this was kind of cool. I was watching that from the beginning. So I thought that was actually really neat. Um, And then the REST API application passwords. That was actually, I haven't played with that at all, but I'm really excited for that because it's, it goes down to the same thing with Stripe and PayPal right now. Say you have multiple shops with PayPal. They all use this one endpoint endpoint, um, URL. It's like so 2010, it's crazy. And then with Stripe, you can just create these new endpoints. Um, They use these with their API. It's just super easy. And that's what this is kind of moving towards um, to create your own API passwords for different connections um, and getting away from the old XML RPC, just old way of communicating with WordPress. So I'm I'm excited to see where this goes for communicating with apps um, down the road. I don't think there's much using it yet but they're kind of at least building a blueprint for it mm. what do you reckon sean um the 5.6 um a lot of people have reported that that some of the plugins are, are breaking because of the new jquery so my and i actually have one site where where um upgrading to to five six breaks some functionality so make sure that you are testing this on a staging site before you upgrade so divi is one of those i had clients this week um they're using an old jquery syntax so they they need the jquery migrate to translate it and if you're disabling jquery migrate or something uh the whole site just completely breaks (laughs) so Mm, lovely jubbly. <laughs> lovely. Uh, what do you reckon, Spencer? I have a few people are using that jQuery migrate. And it's interesting, you know, they got to make these transitions, but 
the jQuery is one of the things we rely heavily on, you know, for most of the plugins today because it's browser based activity versus having to call the server a million times. But it really does reveal the age of WordPress when like really core plugins and themes fall apart just because the version of jQuery is wrong. I mean, it, I don't know what the metaphor would be. It'd be like if suddenly you switched to the new iPhone and you, you couldn't call phone numbers anymore. You had to use like some special new phone number. It's like, really? Like you guys couldn't figure out a way to transition more gracefully? It's not really WordPress's fault. It's just that things got so far down the road before anybody bothered to upgrade that now they're like speaking colloquial English or something. And uh, there was a bunch of other breaks um, in Elementor world as well. A lot of the plugins that are add-ons for Elementor shit their pants this week. And the, the, the clients are all in an uproar because as somebody who works with jQuery and our plugins, you always have the point the finger game. Who's broken? What's wrong? And you know, you have to be on your game. But the good news is, Otherwise, this wasn't really a consequential upgrade. It was really uh, inconsequential um, in terms of that. I had a little chat with Apple this um, this week because my podcast keeps disappearing and, and reappearing in iTunes. So um, I had a little exchange with them, and they said, "It's you." He said, "You're supposed to mark." I got I got told off panel for my swearing last week. They're, um, they said, you're supposed to market for adult content only. I said, why well, that? Said, well, you because you, you of you. you swear. <laughs> no, they, they didn't say me, though, but it is me, isn't it? So I'm, I'm trying to I keep it. I really got you at PG-13, I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. Terrible, isn't it? Oh, we're going to go for our break, listeners and viewers. I've got some more, hopefully, better stories. I think the panel will fall in asleep, actually, but they, I'll, I'll try and wake them up. Uh, um, it is early, though, isn't it? We'll be back in a few moments. Back. We've had we've had an interesting discussion in the break, my listeners and viewers, but there we go. Uh, um, on, 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 on to the next story. Uh, um, I think I've woken up Uncle Spencer. He was kind of, I think he was, there we go. Uh, um, on to the next story, listeners and viewers. Um, how to run a Ponzi scheme for tech people. I love this one. I really did love this. Um um, Brian, what did you think of this one? This is—I thought this was quite good. T- t- yeah, t- this was my favorite article out of all of them. Just I, I just enjoyed reading it. Sometimes it's actually nice to read a shorter article too. Um, and so I, I thought it's just really true, especially because of everyone sitting at home this year and like trying to do this stuff. Like the marketing has just gotten out of control. Like you see it everywhere. Like people doing this stuff. Um, like just marketing all types of eBooks and all sorts of stuff. And you, like, you go look at their websites and like, you can tell they have no clue what they're actually talking about. So it's, it's just like a never ending cycle of, um, yeah, just going down this route. And it's the same, like they were saying, they were focusing on tech people and like you see on, you know, they're posting their bare metrics boards and all this stuff. It's become a, just an endless cycle. Um, and I, I've kind of just started ignoring all of it, to be honest, lately, um, because it's just too much noise. Um, but I thought it, I thought the article was actually really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. What did you reckon? Um, Heather, what did you reckon? I, I think this is hilarious. I mean, I am, um, and, it, and it's spot on. Because like I am an angel investor, I am actually on the board of a, a, a VC and I speak to startups all the time and entrepreneurs all the time that are like coming to me with their big idea and want to get funding um, for exactly this type of thing. And I'm like, dude, uh, until you have a customer, you are not a business, you are a hobby. And, and like all they want to do is put up a, a site and uh, like get people to, to buy into their thing. And I'm like, dude, like overnight successes are like, you, you cannot, do you know Instagram influencers and YouTube influencers and all these people make like at most a dollar a year or they like, it costs them money to be on these sites. It do, they don't make that much money. Like I am like an influencer and like, 
I, I, in my best year have made like $15,000 doing that. But usually like the best score I had was like, I got like free Invisaligns, which cost like $6,000, but that wasn't, I wasn't paid for that. They gave them to me. <laughs> so you don't make money off of these things unless you're a Kardashian. <laughs> so, so like, this is not a be all and end all to uh to a career path and uh having these uh like yeah so you're you're not uh you can't quit your day job by putting up a, a fake course and it is it is indeed a ponzi scheme if you think that uh that you're this is a business mm. yes yes all right then uncle spencer you recovered what do you think <laughs> um there's an element of this as well with the, not the Ponzi schemes as much, but the focus on the wrong part of the business. So for example, I'll pick on ClickFunnels. Amazing business product, people do sell with it. But what bothers me is that the people who tend to sell with ClickFunnels are the people, for example, who run an agency where they get a gold record album for a million dollars of transactions through ClickFunnels. What nobody says is that it's 3% profit margin or something like that. And so what happens is you get these people standing up with their records and they, you know, they tend to match a certain profile. They're young and they've got, you know, their toys and their hats and their beards and their stuff. And everybody else looks at it thinking like, oh, that could be me. Why isn't it me? What's wrong with me? But what they don't really find out is 97%, 95% of it is fluff or cost or overhead. And when you look at the actual, what the people make, it's not always that simple. Admittedly, there are some people that have high profit businesses, but you know, this is a really good, I, I obviously he's being like the Borowitz report is being sort of, uh, you know, campy about saying like, this is how silly this kind of thing is. And what I like about WordPress versus those other things is that WordPress is the other way around. WordPress is the potluck dinner, where if you come in with this filet mignon kind of product, people are like, yeah, like, can I make that at home? Because I got some ground beef in the fridge from a couple years ago. And can I just do it myself? And like, nobody will buy into that BS as easily because they figure there's got to be a free way to do it. So in a weird way, WordPress is grounding people. But at the same time, if you're trying to sell high ticket stuff, you really kind of have to look the other way and turn your back on WordPress because people won't pay you $300 a month for your, you know, load of bullshit. Yeah, what do you reckon, John? I got a great chuckle out of this article, um, and it, it reminds me a lot of, of I, mean, I know you're familiar with this channel, the Mike Winnett Contrapreneur Series. The reason why this stuff works is a lot of marketing is psychological, and when you mm -hmm. do this aspirational marketing where you show yourself, you know, with the rented mansion and the rented Lambo, and uh, or you're on vacation in, you know, Bali or Thailand or whatever, and you're living the life, you know, or, or you show your, your earnings report. A lot of people want to believe that you have cracked the code and you've discovered the secret to making money with low to no effort. But that's so what people, Tony Robbins did to get started. Yep. So people want to buy into that. They want to believe that they can be like you. They're not necessarily buying your stats and your graphs. They're buying the image of you and they believe in that image, no matter what it is, you know, no matter what it is that you're putting up there, they, that's what they aspire to be. So well, it's, it's a kind of, it is, you, you're really on the spot there, Johnny. It's fascinating how they, you know, it's, if you believe it will happen, you know, it's that, it's it's your fault because you didn't believe enough, and if you believe enough, it will happen. Uh, um, and I, you know, but I'm I'm oh God. <laughs> That's why I told my book exactly the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> believe. That's all you got to do. Well, I believe in just day after day. You just you're in the grind, and if you can just move it by the end of the week if you just moved it by two more clients more too thin you know you're going in the, as long as you can stay in the game and even if I'll do it anyway because I, I you know what would I do I just play blood I can't play golf and I'll get bored and I don't want to end up as well, a you know. so that's a different thing it's not I believe if I get two more clients it's if I get two more clients then that will 
like X, like two X my business. And if I two X my business, um, like that just adds up. So like, like every week or every two weeks, if I sign two more clients, then by the end of the year, my business will have exceeded its growth by a certain amount. And that's not believing that's like, I must sign two more clients every X amount of days to grow my business. So like, not, I believe two more clients will come to me <laughs> if I just put that out into the universe. <laughs> there's, there's two different camps of people, like the camp that are in that. Well, like, obviously you've got to do things that would encourage though, but you can't literally make them materialize well, no, but, for you. Like, no, so, but that's the thing. Like the people that buy into these schemes are like, I believe if I light these candles and like, pray to the god of tony robbins that like somebody will come to me because i'm putting out into the universe that i want them to come meanwhile there's other people that are like i believe that, <laughs> that if i pound if i write two more articles and do some proper seo it might yeah, get if i somewhere. do work and i call people and i ask them if they're looking for business <laughs> then i will find new clients Oh dear, what's to do that? What's I, I'm 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 always like really hesitant to to you know put faith in people where it appears that most of their money is generated teaching you how to become rich. I'm always like a little hesitant to to buy into that because most of the people that are that are actually doing it, they're making their moves really quiet. There you go. There we are. On to the next story. I feel that woke us up, didn't it? Uh, I think we're bright and bushy there. Uh, um, uh, um, on, on to the next story. Um, what is the next story? Yeah, there we are. Um, privacy group files complaints against five online test procuring services. I thought this was quite, this is one I found. I, I thought it was quite interesting. What did you think, Eva? Did it have any interest at all? Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> There are so many people this year that are moving to online testing because they have to. And uh, there are so many ways to cheat uh, at online tests. And I'm, I've am i actually been- uh, Wow, there was, there, was, there was plenty of ways to cheat the yellow. Well, the, uh, yeah, yellow. I mean, there's always been ways to cheat. Like, I mean, I'm, I've, I'm always amazed at the ingenuity of kids that come up with ways to cheat. Like one of my favorite well, it's mostly ways- mostly their parents, wasn't it, that you had to worry about? Well, no, I mean, one of my favorite ways this year was this, this so low tech. So like, because they're, they're testing like your ability to be in front of the, the computer and, and be there, like, cause they're, they're um, testing facial recognition. So what people have done is actually set up a uh, green screen background um, with with like a picture of themselves like actually like being at the computer so that the computer is seeing them like in there while like somebody else is down here <laughs> like typing away <laughs> and that's like the one that's cheating it the most <laughs> so like they're <laughs> they're just re- like having the past. The what ingenuity! They've got a future, especially American yeah, co- I mean, corporate it's the culture. Yeah, I mean, it's janky thing. Like it's it's just kind of like the ghost, uh, the way that we used to produce ghosts on a lawn, like against. A- <laughs> but I mean, like the fact that we don't even need something super high tech to to yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I love that. Uh, that kids are going to be kids and and do anything they can to cheat the computer and and anytime we come up with a new way to to block it or to get around it they're going to come up with a way to do it and it makes our tech better so yeah i mean i but one of my favorite things to do like as a security professional is like i absolutely love doing red team blue team uh like penetration testing and stuff like that so like i i love it when when this kind of thing happens uh, just respond to that. All right, there we go. Uh, um, oh, what about you, Spencer? I've, 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 uh, I've observed in America and Britain this fixation about exams. This, and yet, one of the most successful education systems, Finland, they only have one exam, and that's when you're 17. Uh, um, they've got the highest rated education, but America's declining. Britain, they're just, you know, 
they had got all these exams. Then when, when people were actually passing them with the top grades, they complained about that. So they made the exam harder to get the top grade. Uh, um, you know, is, is it a bit of a fix? Am I right? It is a bit of a fixation, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the things have changed recently. I have a nine-year-old and a 17-year-old and a 19-year-old. And so I got to see how these things evolved. And <clears throat> this year, especially, the exams are not as relevant and the teachers are behind that. Fortunately, at least in a lot of the, in the undergrad as well as the uh, um, lower grades. And I think the reason is because like, for example, in America, we have these things called ACTs and SATs that are originally were designed to help filter out which kids should go to which universities, private universities. This year, they had to rethink the whole thing. And in the process, they've kind of right now seemingly come to the conclusion like we don't need these anyway because we're about to go possibly into the big vacuum of non-existence anyway when people realize they don't need to send their kid to college for 400 grand so we're going to be inviting everybody who's got a wallet to come to college soon but that's the point the point is that when the original educational system america was created it was to create factory workers stop full stop and that is it and then it grew into a, a myth that if you sent your kids to college and paid for it, that they would get some high paying job. Whereas before that, colleges, especially state universities were primarily free. And they were designed as the exception to the rule because most kids got out of high school and they went on to a trade job and they could earn a living as a plumber and raise a family of, of five. And so what's happening is the evolution. I think the thing that's interesting about this article that I read a different article on the same point was they're violating primary human rights in order to test you for things like, for example, the kids that had to do their ACT or maybe it was the uh, LSAT for law school, they weren't allowed to leave to go to the bathroom. I think it was for the LSAT. So there's a story, some tragic story, some young woman who like had to go in her pants, like number two because they wouldn't let her get up during the, she would have failed the exam and she'd been working so hard for this. That kind of behavior is extraordinarily bad. And it reminds me how the prison system works and how the other systems work where somebody sees an opportunity to leverage their advantage and they're doing it. And right now that's what's going on. But just like this in the next article, we're starting to see that the kickback is happening. And the kickback is like normal people are waking up and saying, wait, what the hell is going on here? This is silly. And, uh, we'll see how it pans out but you know we're yeah. in a weird world right now i'm a little i think all of us are exhausted but especially with the election and the, the stuff that's going on now with those states attorneys it reminds us of like what happened with mccarthyism you run the whole gambit of emotions and responses and everything goes all the way to the right and then it hopefully bounces back and i think this is just another example of it you know yeah but i'll kind of before i put it over to john i just think there's too much emphasis in Britain and America on the on the top. And there's not a, enough emphasis at the beginning and middle of people's educational journey. My feeling is if if you make sure that people can read, write, express themselves and have basic mathematical skills, they're quite, you know, you should allow them as they as they get older to go down pathways that interest them. Where um you know, but too many people kind of forced down or, yeah, maybe I'm just dribbling. What do you reckon, uh, John? I think I'm just waffling now, and I, John? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, people, a lot of people are asking, like, um, what is going to be things that are permanently changed post-COVID? I think education, mm. and particularly higher education, is going to be one of those things. Because what are, I mean, in higher education, like, what are you paying for? You're paying for the, you know, certificate at the end and the knowledge that you get, but mostly like certificate. So there, a lot of places are, are going to be forced to have e-learning passes. Now, when it comes to this particular story, like with the privacy issues, I just, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's crazy that we're still trying to pretend like we can go back to normal and just flip the switch in this year and, you know, have kids, you know, in their own home, but like, you got to be on camera, like at all times, 
you know, it's, it, the school is like a workplace. It's, it's about making sure that, that butts are in seats and you, you have someone like overseeing you. I, I think this is a legitimate case as far as like the invasion of privacy, you know, with the different students and the, and the different kids, it's, it's, you know, you're, it, it's different, like going to school, like a public place or like where there is a, a, a building it's, or inviting people into your home and requiring like it, people to be on camera, like every so often, I don't know. it's just a mess to me, but there should be a lot more leeway that's being given by some of these schools. That's all I yeah, got Well, say. not just uh, saying, well, you know, you passed all these, but you will, you know, at some stage uh, you'll be asked to come in and we're going to ask you questions about the subject that you're supposed to be studying. And we expect you to be able to answer our questions in a coherent, logical way. And if you can't answer the questions, you ain't been doing the studying, so you're not going to pass. That, that's, it's really good. You, you can't actually do something simple like that, can you? You know, <laughs> I suppose they, they used to do that in Oxford and Cambridge. You know, they just you, you used to just be left to your own devices. But at the end, you would be given an interrogation from your fellow okay. students and lecturers and if you want to make you know look like a total idiot just don't do the studying because you weren't going to pass at the end so you're wasting everybody's time in the first place it soon kind of wakes people up if they know at the end of it they were gonna you know the worst prospect was looking like an idiot in front of your fellow students <laughs> well i got used to it but you know you do get used to it in the end there we go um on to oh yeah oh yeah People, you know, Heather love this one. Heather will absolutely love this last story. Uh, uh, Facebook crushes rivals to maintain illegal monopoly. The entire United States yells in Z Zuckerberg's face. <laughs> so, Heather, what did you reckon of this one, Heather? Um, yeah, uh, I think it's kind of funny that um, the FCC and the government allowed them to merge in the first place yeah. and now they're like hey uh wait a second we created a monopoly and now we need to break you up so um i think it's going to be a difficult uh breakup i don't think it's gonna uh i, I don't think it's a slam dunk um so yeah I, I, while uh i think it's 46 states uh are uh and the federal government are in the antitrust lawsuit Right now, um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's like definitely going to go through. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens. I call him Tim Mann, the man that has no heart. Uh, um, there we go. Uh, um, yeah, what do you reckon, Brian? I, I think it, it was amazing that they let them kind of absorb, that's like the Borg, wouldn't it? Absorb these two other companies in the first place, really, wouldn't it, Brian? What do you reckon? Well, yeah, like Heather was saying, I think that's the problem. If they were going to stop it at all, it would have had to have been then. And now it's kind of too late. Um, but again, I think we talked about this before when I was last on about these companies oh. like Facebook and Google being like, they're still private companies. And I got to thinking about that more too, just because, you know, being a marketer, I've used Google AdWords and Facebook ads throughout all my career. And so I, it's, I don't want to, I don't know any nicer way to say it. I rely, I have relied on Facebook's ability to sell private data to make some of my living. That's the best way you could put it. Yeah. Um, everybody knows they're selling data at this point, private, you know, private data. Like in my opinion, I think if you sign up for Facebook, it is your own choice. You're giving them your data. Like I choose to give them my data for what to be on Facebook. Same with Google. You know, I give them my data because I want my bookmarks to sync between my laptop and my desktop, or I want my history to go back and forth. So, you know, it's things like that makes my life easier, but I'm okay with, sure, maybe they're going to steal some of my data. Like I'm giving them permission. Um, so this, I don't know, it just irks me the wrong way when it, when they always say, you know, that they're selling price. Your, your private data. Of course, they're selling your data. That's the whole, that's the whole reason they exist. Um, but yeah, for this, I think if they were going to break them up, like I said before, I think it, it's like almost too late now. It's the same kind of thing with, 
I forget who was merging. It was a Sprint and Verizon or not? I'll yeah, or I'm, I'm a I'm the cell phone companies. Like there was one merger recently that like um, there it's pretty much going to be down to two companies or maybe it already is. Free. And free. free. Exactly. And so like they're heading in the exact same direction as this kind of stuff is. And um, it does suck for consumers though because less competition means you know we end up with um, more the higher prices essentially. Um, because they're not competing as much against each other. Um, it's the same thing with ISPs. I think you have the same problem. Like I have the choice of two internet providers right now and they both suck. So it's like, it's just a horrible place to be in. Um, isn't, isn't Google Fiber coming to Phoenix? They nixed that coming to Phoenix. Yeah, they were. And they uh, nixed it. So I would have moved in in heartbeat if they did, but, um, but I have fiber with uh, Cox right now and it's not, they've had their own problems. So, um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I, I feel on the fence of this thing because I, uh, while they are a monopoly, I still feel like they're a private company and I'm giving them permission to take my private data sometimes mm. because I want to use their services um, because um, and part of being a marketer, I use some of that stuff to make my living. So yeah, just all, I guess the whole ram of, of emotions with that type of stuff, but. All right. I think we're going to leave it. We're going to go to recommendations because I know you panel, you don't want this to go much more than an hour, which I can't blame you. Uh, um, so recommendations of the week. Um, mine is version press. I, I've only had a bit of a look at this, but it's a, it's a kind of open source um, um, version control um, that uses Git as well. And if you never use version control, it can normally be very difficult to set up and that. Hopefully this is gonna be a bit easier. But when you're doing it through Git, it normally is a little bit easier. I only have had a couple of projects where we were made to utilize version control. Um, but go and have a look at it. Um, Brian, have you got anything you want to plug to the listeners and viewers? Um, it's not really a tool. I didn't have really any new tools I used recently. I oh, that's a shame, but, Brian. That's a shame. Isn't it? I would say one performance recommendation is for people to take a look at system fonts because one change that a lot of people are not talking about recently was with Google Chrome's cache partitioning with Google fonts. Uh, before you'd visit site one with Google font, site two would have it cached. So like that's the whole point of Google fonts was super fast. With Google Chrome 87, that has gone away completely. You visit site one, the Google font has to download. You visit site two, the same Google font has to now download again. So just keep in mind when you're adding things like fonts to your website. Uh, Chrome has completely broken the performance aspect of like serving them off of CDNs and things. So uh, just take a look at, be more careful with fonts going forward, for sure. And don't have 20 different ones. That's what you're saying. Well, yeah. right. <laughs> and if, you find, if you can find our article about that in the next few minutes and bun it into chat, then I can make sure um, we've got something to link. That would be helpful. Heather, have you got anything? Apart from your book, apart from your fantastic <laughs> read, readable book, Heather, have you got anything? Uh, yes. Yeah, and it's not a tool again, but it, it is something that uh, will help you with tools. Uh, so my nonprofit, uh, Serenzi Global, uh, we are opening up our annual technology grant uh, for the next month. So uh, it's for underserved uh, and underprivileged and people that are uh, unemployed uh, due to the pandemic. Um, to help them uh, with uh, reskilling themselves uh, to get into the technology sector. So uh, we provide a one-year uh, subscription to Pluralsight uh, to learn um, technology, uh, like any, any kind of technology thing that you want to learn on Pluralsight uh, to help you reskill. So uh, apply now for that grant. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's like almost $800 uh, that you would be getting for free to learn on Floral Site. So, um, if you don't qualify for it, definitely share that out um, because uh, we give a hundred of those out a year. All right, make sure that the links in chat, and I will make sure that is 
Uncle Spencer, have you got anything you want to bring to the consciousness of our beloved listeners and viewers? Indeed. Uh, there is a website called tastewp.com, which is doing something very handy and which we're going to use today in our webinar at 1230 when you and I kiss and make up in public for all our wrangling today. And uh, we're going to teach people how to use... Oh, I look forward to it, actually, our wangling. It's the thing that it kind of wakes me up, actually. People who will listen to the show know that I'm, I, I've am i been here since show one, so I, you and I get to wrestle in public occasionally. But today we're going to use tastewp.com. What it lets you do is very quickly spin up an instant WordPress site with full access, full everything, and you can use it to test out your theories and your plugins and your little experiments because it's a complete throwaway. It's a marketing play by these guys that are doing some hosting, but as far as a convenient tool, listen, I got all my own little demo servers that I can spin up, but I use this all the time when a client calls and says, hey man, my jQuery isn't working on WordPress 5.6. And I go, hold on. And I just spin one of these up, throw a couple plugins in and I go, well, I'll call Brian Jackson. You're right, Divi is broken. But you know, this is a good experimental tool. And by the way, there is a plugin that Brian referenced, but there's a tool for jQuery migrate that you can throw in there that will give you a warning on your dashboard what's broken and uh, a couple other doodads that we've been using lately to make sure that these things don't cause catastrophe. But yeah, I'll, I'll put, I've actually uh, got different. I was actually thinking of doing a shortcut and having it linked to a voice um, pre recorded. Uh, your DV is broken because of jQuery. So yeah. if I can press one button, I can send the reply straight to the client actually. Right. Uh, by the way, and worth, worth mentioning, the reason I bring this up is that just what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, things moving very quickly, right? If you are in the business of doing sites for clients, or if you make plugins or other service, it's really helpful when the client has a problem to go, hold on and take the same couple things they're using, throw it into a brand new site and immediately see whether it's that that you see in front of you broken, or if not, you go, uh, it's probably something they've been fiddling around with on their own site in the background. Yeah, we don't allow them to fiddle. <laughs> That's the Arab. Um, so um, there we go. Um, John, um, have you got anything you want to recommend to our yeah. beloved listeners and viewers? So this is a, a recommendation. This article is a little bit older. Uh, some of the things that you'll see mentioned in here, such as uh, Google Plus profiles are a little bit older, but this is from the northcut.com blog, the SEO checklist of Google ranking factors. And they basically put them into different categories of whether it's a myth, whether it's likely, probable, or concrete proven. But this is a good place uh, to start if you're uh, trying to figure out what to believe. I, I actually prefer this list a little bit more than the one that that gets shared more often with that says 200 ranking factors this one is 273 so anyway go check it out i think the other thing to say to that john is when when any you know there are kind of individuals and resources online that um that when they say something um i probably would listen to it a bit more but I haven't, there's nobody online that I would say that I agree with everything they say or uh, 100%. Um, so, um, but there's other people where I think they would do their best not to come out with a blatant lie. Um, but I think, I think you've got to be a little bit suspicious about anything that's said online in the public, haven't you, really, aren't you? Not just take it on face value haven't you well i mean it, that's really it a lot of it anything that's being said by anyone you should put to the test whether it's from a google representative whether it's from a seo because these things can change uh but i mean really honestly just think about what's good for the person searching and if you follow that and use some common sense you're gonna You'll, you'll get most of the way there. Yeah, that's great. Well, so I think somebody's wanted. Uh, um, there we go. Uh, um, so um, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, so Heather, how can people find out more about you and your unicorn thoughts, Heather? 
I am Heatheriel everywhere online. So just Heatheriel.com, Heatheriel on Twitter, everywhere you can find me. There we go. The you the unicorn whispier. Uh, um, so Brian. Sorry, Heather. I just couldn't resist it. Uh, um, uh, Brian, how can people find out more about you? What you're up to? Uh, yeah, you can just go to our website. At, it's forgemedia.io, or I'm um, always on Twitter at Brian Lee Jackson. And Uncle Spencer, how can grumpy Uncle Spencer? How can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Uh, you can go to launchflows.com or uh, you can click to have a free call over at the front of wpfusion.com. There we go. Come to the webinar today. Yeah, that's great. And uh, my friend John Locke. John Locke. Uh, um, uh, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? Well, you can go to my website, lockdownseo.com, or go to my YouTube channel, uh, search Lockdown SEO, you'll find it. So those are two places. And if you're listening to this live, you should straight away go to the WP Tonic website and join our webinar, which we're going to be having in about an hour's time. Me and Spencer are going to be spending another hour together. It should be interesting, to say the least. Uh, but we will be going through all your marketing um, dreams and nightmares in one webinar show. But I'm just going to leave it to Uncle Spencer. He is going to be the guiding light in this experience. And if you really want to support the show, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We've got a ton of resources on there and I'm adding more videos all the time. So we'll be back next week with another great panel and hopefully some great stories. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Silence. Drinking silence from the panel.